thought I would bring you outside with me today. As you can see, we still have quite a bit of snow on the ground. However, oh my goodness, it feels like spring out here. The sky is blue, the birds are chirping, and we're supposed to get, I believe, up into the 50s this week. I thought because it is Valentine's week, we would have a little Valentine's tea together. What I have decided to make is I thought we would make an English custard or an English pudding, and then we will go ahead, go in, decorate the dining room table, have our English pudding, and enjoy a little Valentine's treat together. So of course, when you live amongst a lot of trees and you have snow or ice storms or high winds, you do tend to lose limbs. And we lost a fairly large limb off of our tree in the front yard. And I just saw it the other day and I thought, oh, what a shame. I wish there was something I could do with that. Well, there is. I believe I was either at an inn or somewhere, and I had seen where they took a real branch, yet the flowers on them were artificial. So we are going to attempt that today. So I cut a few branches, and we're going to go inside, and we are going to attempt this craft together. So let's go inside and get started. Okay, so here are the supplies for our craft today. So these are the branches that I cut off the large one that fell in our front yard. So these obviously, these are real. And then these are artificial flowers that I found in my stash up in my attic. Um, these, I mean, they're, as you can tell, they're this stem they just they they are a cheaper artificial flower and because of that i don't mind plucking off the little blossoms to glue on here and, and they'll just look so much more real so i had one stem of a pinkish hue and then i have these white ones and and i'm not sure if they're supposed to be a quince or a dogwood I don't know. They're they're pretty and I'm anxious to get them on there. I had also put I also have some of the uh, artificial for Scythia. I thought, oh maybe I would do that and maybe I will on a smaller stem. I'll see how this turns out. So you have your artificial flowers and it's great if it's something that you already have on hand and maybe aren't using or maybe some of it is a little damaged. Great way to reuse just the blossoms. And then I have my hot glue gun and I have my glue sticks. So let's go ahead. We will start by taking the blossoms off. They come off very easy. And I'm gonna continue doing that and just making a little pile of those to get started. And then we'll start gluing them onto our limb. Okay, so the glue gun is all heated up. We're just going to put a little dab of glue on the tip of the stem of our flower and then just adhere that to wherever you think a little blossom would be. Hold that for just a few minutes and we will just keep going. And how easy is that? Now once you put them, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but once I put them onto a real limb, they do look real and it's just amazing what a little change that makes. So you have to hold them for just a few seconds. Once they start to adhere, then you can just let them go and dry. Again, I'm just putting glue right on the stem here and then holding it on the end of that branch. So that's what I'm doing to start with. So as I'm going along here, I decided to take the stick and just put it in a vase. Now it's elevated and it makes it 
easier to work with. So that's a suggestion for you also. Let's continue on. Okay, the first branch is completed. I wish you could see this in person. Honestly, uh, it looks so real. You really have to get in close to tell that they are artificial flowers. So here, as you can see in some areas, I doubled up on some blossoms. I added the pink in every here, every here and there. Um, I didn't want to do all pink. And as you recall, I had, um, I had a pink and I had a white. So I just used a little bit of the pink every here and there. And then also to show you, so this was my original artificial branch of the white flowers. So I took all of those off and used an entire stem then on here. Again, just sporadically put some pink in, which looks fine because as you can see, I mean, even on the white, there's a pink hue. So I just love it. And then putting it in the vase to stand it up was so much easier to work with. I wish I would have thought of that at the beginning, but now I know. So I am going to go ahead and do my second branch and I will show you then once everything is completed. Okay, so I've put branch number two in my vase. Great working space. Another recommendation I would have is to go ahead and take all of the little blossoms off of the sticks first. Um, two things, they're just, they're just very handy to have, and they do come right up. They're just coming right off the tip there. But also the reason being now we know how many we have. So as we're going through and placing them on our branch, if we start running out of the little blooms, then we have a better idea of the placement of our little blossoms. So let's get started on number two. Okay, well there we go, it's completed. I did a total of two limbs as you can see. As far as the artificial flowers, I emptied two of these stems and partial of the pink. It's very pretty. To me, it looks real. Um, even Mark said he was a little surprised at how real it looks in person. So an idea for you for a very fun craft, and again, you can use any kind of flowers you want, you know, as I'm assuming, as long as they're small, small blossoms. Before we begin our little cooking segment today, I would like to begin by apologizing if you hear the washer going in the background. I'm sorry, we have a few things going on here today, but I wanted to get started with our uh, special treat. So what we are making today, I came upon a recipe called a very proper English custard. Okay, the name got me. So we are going to make that. And basically it is what we would call a pudding. And I came up with the idea because I was going through my cupboard and I had found this. This is something I had purchased a while ago at one of the British stores. Uh, I believe it was down in Concord, Mass. Honestly, it would probably be equivalent to 
like our package of Jell-O pudding. What's different about this, when I started looking into this, it's interesting because the gentleman that developed this product, uh, his name was Sir Alfred Bird, and he came up with this. He called it an eggless custard powder. And it has no eggs because his wife was allergic to eggs. So he developed this. And a fun fact, he also created baking powder, the same baking powder we use today. So anyway, I am not going to use this. I have used this in the past for just a quick pudding. It's very good. I am not using it today because if you've been around here for a while, you know I do like to make things from scratch. And in this case, I wasn't super crazy about the ingredients. The one I'm going to make today is going to be a cleaner version. This one does have added flavoring. And it's basically sugar, cornstarch, your flavorings, and then you add your hot milk. So we are eliminating the flavorings by doing ours from scratch today. So let's start with our proper English custard. So we are going to begin, I've already pre-measured out, it's a combination of milk and cream, and I will list the recipe that I am doing below. So it will be my conversion over. So we're going to begin, I've already pre-measured out the milk and the cream, and we are going to pour that in here and begin to warm that up. And that will just be slowly on a, um, a lower heat. And I'm going to bring that slowly to a simmer. So let's begin with that. So while this is simmering, I am going to go ahead and combine my sugar and my arrowroot. And I am going to do two tablespoons of sugar. And that is an unbleached cane sugar that I'm using. And then in lieu of the cornstarch, I am going to use arrowroot. It's just a little cleaner version. Again, two tablespoons of the arrowroot. We're going to just stir that gently and then we will go ahead and add in our egg yolks, which are four. So I'll we'll just, just combine that real quickly. And then let's do our egg yolks. Okay, and I've pre-measured out my four egg yolks. We'll just add those and then mix that together. And that just makes basically a thickening. I have to say, I love to bake. I always have loved to bake. And Mark has made comments before. When I'm baking, what a mess I have. I have all kinds of dishes and utensils out. And um, you know what they say, though, that a messy baker is a really good baker. <laughs> At least that's what I'm going with. So as long as it tastes good and you clean it up, who cares, right? So still waiting for this to simmer. Now, once this has uh, started to simmer, it's going to be, obviously it's warm. It is starting to steam just a little bit over here. And we are going to take a little bit of the warmed milk we're going to slowly add a little bit into this. And we want to do that slowly, just a tiny bit, because we obviously we do not want to cook these eggs. So we're going to slowly combine all of it, add it back to the stove, and reheat it. Now, one thing I am going to do different also, I just purchased this organic vanilla bean paste the other day. 
this is going to have just a little bit stronger of a taste than your vanilla extract. Go ahead and use vanilla extract if that is all you have. Vanilla beans, scraping those out, that would be great also. But I'm gonna try this. I love the taste of vanilla, so if it adds a little more of a vanilla taste, thumbs up for me. Now, hopefully you can see it is starting to steam. I'm getting a little bit of a skin on top of the milk. So I am going to go ahead and combine that into my egg mixture. Okay, so slowly we are going to add just a little bit while whisking. Let's just do a little bit at a time. We are going to be adding all of this And once we have this all combined, we will add it back to the pan and we are going to heat it again and cook until it has totally thickened. Okay, so it has tempered. I can go ahead and add all of it safely now. Okay, now we will go ahead and add this back to the pan. Okay, let's add our vanilla paste. Now it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla. I am going to basically eyeball it. I'm just gonna squirt a little in. We are going to reheat that. We'll be whisking it, not stirring it. And we are just going to continue to heat and stir and you will feel the consistency. And it's a slow process. It may take a little while to thicken, but that's perfectly fine. Now that I'm thinking of it, you certainly can just stir it because I think when you're stirring, it's gonna give you a better feel for when it is thickening. Just make sure that's on a low heat. Let me show you what that looks like. Nothing more comforting than pudding or custard. I just love, I love it. Personally, I love it warm. Some people prefer cold. You do you. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, a pudding or custard, it's comfort food. I love any kind of pudding. I love, one of my favorites is tapioca. Yes, I'm from the Midwest. We love our tapioca. Um, and have you seen that movie? I believe it's called New in Town. For all my Midwesterner friends, you have to watch it. It's hilarious. It has Renee Zellweger in it. I think it's Harry Connick Jr. It's an older movie, but it's fun. I digress. I love puddings. I love all kind of puddings. Now, when I first, my first Christmas with my husband's family, their tradition, New Year's, no, their tradition Christmas Eve was for his mother to make homemade chocolate pudding and she would serve that warm on top of vanilla ice cream. I'd never had such a thing. It was delicious. So that's another one to try if you would like to try something new. Anyway, this is thickening and I'm probably going to be done here shortly and we can dish it up and go and have our little afternoon tea. Okay, as I'm setting up for my tea, I just wanted to give you a little closer look. 
as to what's on the table. Of course, I have my assistant over there. And I just lit some candles. These candles here, they're showing up a little more tan on camera. However, they are more of a pinkish hue. Those are actually a root brand tapers. So I added those and I decided to go with a pink theme, uh, kind of making this a bit of a Valentine tea or just an afternoon midwinter tea. But because Valentine's Day is coming up, I chose to go with the pink dish. Emily had gotten two of these for me. They look like a depression glass. They really are not, but she had gotten those for me for Christmas two years ago, and I love them. And then I have my napkin, which is not a Kath Kidston, but a Kath Kidston look-alike, and I love those. And then I couldn't decide. I have my Emma Bridgewater cup, that is an English brand. I also have my Hogpin Pottery that I love. I couldn't decide which one to go with. And that's H-O-G-B-E-N Pottery, again, out of England. But because it's Valentine's Day, I had a bit of a floral theme. I thought I would go ahead with Emma Bridgewater. I wanna show you the other napkins though I was looking at. My other daughter got me these for Christmas and I love them. They're so cute. I love the queen. I love her corgis. I love everything English. And then today I'm going with my Harney and Sons, one of my favorite. It does happen to be a vanilla flavor and it's so good. If you haven't tried it, please do. I love my Harney and Sons teas. We're going with a vanilla custard or pudding. So let's go ahead with a vanilla tea. The other thing I have that I'm going to look through, I just got this at a consignment store. Now, the cover itself is what caught my attention. I love anything with polka dots on it. And then when I picked it up, I don't know if you can see, it's Lark Rise to Candleford. Have you seen that show. Obviously, it's missing the dust jacket. That doesn't matter to me. Um, it's a favorite show of mine. I was introduced to this years ago. I watched the whole series, and I liked it so much that I ended up buying it in CD form. That tells you it was a few years ago. I didn't realize there were books on it. This is the first I have seen. So uh, I picked this up. I believe it was $3. Again, it's missing the dust jacket. It has some beautiful illustrations in it. And so I got that out to look through and peruse while I'm having my custard and my tea. So with that being said, let's go and dish up our custard. And of course, if I decide I need a refill, I have some hot water in my little pottery barn teapot that uh, I got in a consignment store years ago. I don't remember how long I've had it, but I loved the little bee on it. I love that you can actually see the little vanilla beans in the custard or the pudding. And again, I decided to use a vanilla bean paste so let's go taste it. So I decided to add just a little cherry to the top of the custard or pudding. It does add a bit of sweetness to it. The pudding is not going to be super sweet. 
we just had I believe a couple tablespoons of sugar so that's perfectly fine with me so before I go ahead and taste this I do have a special little announcement I wanted to share with you so go grab yourself a cup of tea and we'll have a quick chat so before we go ahead and start in and try our pudding, I just wanted to share with you, uh, I have made the decision to go ahead and open up an online store. Many of you have asked me throughout the months if I would consider selling some of my consignment finds. And I will say that that is part of what I will be selling online is different items that I have fallen in love with and maybe I just couldn't use in my own home because I probably already have one. But anyway, along with consignment finds, I would like to include uh, new items too. Maybe products that I have used through the years and enjoyed. Uh, whether or not I can buy them to sell online, that has been... Uh, that has been a learning curve for me. So it is taking a lot of time. There's a lot to learn. It's much more than just opening up an online store. And to be quite honest, this has been a dream of mine for many years. I have talked about wanting to have some kind of a little shop. Even when we lived in Michigan, I had thoughts of, uh, we had an old barn. Could we possibly redo that and open a store? But and open a little shop but it didn't work out so this is a new way I am going to do this online like I said I will be carrying pre-loved and new items please be patient with me though there is a lot to do in getting this set up I have started that it's a little bit of a longer process than I thought it was going to be so my goal is to have that up and running within the next month or so is my hope and I will certainly let you know once that is up and running. I'm very excited. I hope you're as excited as I am. This is a first for me, like I said, a dream for many years. I'm excited to be able to offer you items too that either I have found in my consignment shopping or New England made, definitely US made uh, with maybe a New England vibe to them and uh, just different products I have found that I enjoy. So thank you so much for joining me today. We've had a busy afternoon. My house smells lovely and I just want to enjoy this while I check out my new book and I wanted to thank you for joining me today. I wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day. Let me know if you try this. Let's try this. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh my goodness, this is luscious. To me, this is comfort in a bowl. So I hope you try this. I hope you enjoy it. Have a lovely Valentine's Day, friends, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.